Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Netflix original series, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Season one, episode two, nothing is simple anymore. That's coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. <laughs> Opening scene, we have this cute little creature. He gets out of his bed. He steps into his shoes. He's combing his hair. And as he's combing his hair, it looks nice and neat. And he looks in the mirror and he's like, hmm. <laughs> and he's satisfied with the messy look. He gets dressed, he sits down at a little table, he's eating his porridge, and as he's eating it, he spills it on himself, and he's like, oh. Then he changes, he gets ready for the day, puts on his clothes, now he's ready to rock and roll. He goes down the hall and goes into the next room. And we see it is the machine that Olga has been in a trance under, visually um, going into the uni universe and going into the scars, stars and discovering all of these different planets and worlds. And he's cleaning up and dusting, and we can know that that's the assistant that's always kept her place nice and tidy. And she's sitting there, and there's a close-up on her face, and all of a sudden we see... <coughs> oh! <laughs> How long have I been out of it? Oh! Oh, and she looks at her assistant and he's just in shock like, oh, she's awake, she's awake. And she says, well, what's been going on and what are you doing? And he goes, me, 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 me. <laughs> he has his little language. And she goes, well, how long have I been under? You've been my assistant for a while, correct? And he says, me, 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 me. she says, your grandfather? Oh, so we get an idea <laughs> of how long she's been in this trance. The person that's her assistant is basically the third generation of assistants that have been in there tidying up her place. And she says, oh, oh no, something isn't right. And there must be a reason why I've come out of my search in the stars in the universe Something must be wrong with Thra. So she's looking very regretful as she's dusting off dust off of her clothes and <coughs> coughing dust. So she's been idle and hasn't moved in a very long time. She starts to reflect and thinks out loud and says, it's my fault. I let them distract me from the crystal. I've got to get up, and she gets her little cane, and figure out what's going on. Something's not right. So she wobbles out to figure out what is the status of what's going on with Thra. So Ogra is awake. We have Deet. She's now above ground and discovering this new world with her sheer blindfold. Because remember in the last review, she's been underground her whole life and has never been above ground. But from the message that she received from the century tree, she has got to go above ground and start her journey to hurrah. And as she's going, she's seeing light and all these different creatures and listening to all these different sounds and she's just really kind of like in this fog of walking around and she's just trusting her instincts that she'll get to finally end up where she's supposed to be she is confident that she won't be lost she doesn't feel like she's afraid she is just trusting that she is on this secret mission all in agreement. yes we must tell everyone that rion killed mara and they'll believe us because why would we do such a thing we're protectors of the crystal start to spread the word around and let everybody know this truth. 
So the information about Rion is already all through the castle to all the soldiers that are protecting the Skeksis and the Mystics. And they already have it in their ear that Rion killed Mera. And they believe it. They are just like, man, did you hear that he killed her? And, and now we don't know where he is. And when we find him, we've been commanded to bring them back here. And so he hears that and he's going through the castle trying to escape and as Rion is trying to escape he sees Gurgen his friend his soldier friend that we see in the first episode and he says Rion you're alive where have you been do you realize that everybody thinks that you killed her and he says I didn't it's all a lie if you share with me in a dream I'll prove to you that it's not true and he reaches his hand out and we understand now that a dream is what's called when they share a vision or a thought that they have so they interlock hands and Gurgen is able to see when the scientist pulled her in when he strapped her down and when she looked at, into the crystal and died as her life essence was drained from her and translated into liquid form he even saw them drink the liquid essence and put the rest of the essence into a bottle and he comes out of the dream and he says well you know i can't believe that and he says yes i know so we've got to escape we've got to tell everybody else what they're doing here and what the crystal is really in danger we've got to tell everybody and we've got to see how we can escape and gurgin is like we can try to escape but there's soldiers all around so Let's work together and try to get out of here. Deet is still in her voyage and seeing different animals and listening to weird sounds. And she comes into contact with the spider creature that is affected by the darkness. And she is afraid and doesn't know what to do. And all of a sudden we have this cute creature come out of nowhere and he starts to defend her. And hit, and hit the spider with a little spoon that he has and he's hitting the spider and he's trying to get out of there and the spider runs off and she says oh well thank you so much you rescued me and I didn't know what that creature was what is your name and he says oh <laughs> so we learned that his name is oh <laughs> and he is so cute and he can barely speak his language but we have a few words sprinkled here here and there so we can understand him and he says ah, fight sword so he thinks that his wooden spoon is his glorious sword that he has defended her from this creature so they agree to be nice and cordial with one another and she explains to him that she is on her voyage to Hara and she has a duty from the century tree to get there and tell everybody what's going on with the message that she told that she got from the crystal and how the crystal is infected and infecting animals and slowly infecting all living creatures within Thra. So, up oh, <laughs> he is energized and he has basically some sort of communication and letting her know that not only does he know how to get there, but he would like to join her as she takes her journey to Hara. The princess is still riled up from what she saw, the symbol, the book opening, all of those things that she runs to her mother, Matra. And she tells her, mother, I've seen this. And the mother says, no, 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 you've done enough. You've been in your library looking at all of these things. You caused a little bit of embarrassment when the Skeksis got here. How about you just go and make basically make yourself useful? And the princess is so frustrated with it, she goes back to the library and she speaks to the librarian and she tells him, I have got to know, I have got to figure out what this symbol means. It obviously means something because it looks familiar. The librarian tells her, if you want to know what the symbol means, go to the area of Sifa. They are well known to know about symbols and things that are symbolic and meetings. So go there and look for Elder Kadia. 
you see Elder Kadia, he can go more into detail. So let's go. The princess sees Elder, Elder Kadia and says, I saw this symbol and I really want you to translate what it means. And I think it's something serious to know about our memories, to know about our past. past. Can you help me out? And he says, hmm, before I tell you any of that, please join me in a bit of tea. And he pours the tea, and when he pours the tea, the princess is very skeptical, skeptical about what this tea is. And as he's talking about how she should forget about things that she sees and how she shouldn't cause any trouble about all of those things that she reads into the library, he turns around and reaches for something. And when he turns around, the princess switches <laughs> the drinks. And when she switches the drinks, he turns back around and he says, now, where are we? And she says, oh, the tea, the tea? And he says, yes. So when he picks up the tea, he drinks it and he says, yes. So, symbols. Well, hello, how are you? And she says, I just told you who I was. And he says, well, we were talking about something, but now I can't remember. And she says, oh, well, what's wrong? I just told you why I was here. We meet Onika, and Onika says he's already drank the potion that will make him forget his memory. He won't remember who you are, and he won't remember anything that has to do with symbolisms and meanings. But the symbol that you're talking about and that you showed him, I know what it means. I understand what it means, but unfortunately, this elder here, he is forever forgetful. Onika explains that this symbol represents how all Gefling have memories and symbols that they all share. So this is something that intertwines all Gefling and it's a symbolism of all of us working together collectively. Meanwhile, we have the scientist in his lab and he's locked away the little bit of essence that's left over because they don't have another Gefling, so he must keep it a secret and locked away. And as he leaves the room, we have Chamberlain who comes in and he notices the essence and he wants to get it. He wants his hands on it himself and he's trying to figure out a way to get this essence and he figures out how to find his way to get into it but as he's trying to get into the locked area he noticed that the scientist comes back in and is taking little sips of the essence and basically wants a piece of that and he says well what are you doing are you enjoying the essence and keeping it to yourself and they're like no and they're arguing back and forth and he's like i'll keep it with me and i'm gonna make sure nobody else steals it because you're trying to find a way to keep this to yourself we have rion and gurgen they're still trying to get out of this place and as they're trying to escape they run into Chamberlain and the scientist and they say oh I see that you're trying to escape but don't be afraid just stay here and we'll tell everybody the truth and you don't have to run and in the meantime Rian sees that essence that he has in his hand and he's trying to take it and he's like, Gurgen, we've got to get the essence and we've got to take it with us because if we take it with us, we can prove not only by a dream, but we can also have physical proof of this to prove what happened to her and that I didn't kill her. So they get into this little ruckus and they're going back and forth and they're having a little scuffle and Rian is able to grab the essence but unfortunately we have Gurgen who is captured by the Skeksis and unfortunately Rion has to escape because he has no other choice. If they're both captured then there's nothing we can they can do but if Rion can escape at least they have a chance to tell everybody what's going on. We have the sisters. We have 
Brea, we have Celadon and Tavra. And Celadon is not too pleased with her sister, uh, Bria, and says, Bria or Brea, I'm sorry, I forgot which one it is. But she's frustrated with her sister because she says, Celadon says, I'm so frustrated that I go to all the meetings, I'm the one standing in, listening to everything, learning all of the ethics, while I have Brea, who's always in the library, not doing what she's supposed to do. Oh, Matra, which is her mother, she wants to tell her that she should be punished. She should be sent away because she's not taking her role seriously. She communicates that with the mother. And of course, the mother is already feeling some type of way because the daughter hasn't been responsible and she has been punished and pretty much banished to do what they call a basic community service in helping people who need help, villagers, um, whatever's needed in the village, going away and doing that. Because since she can't seem to help somebody, they're gonna force her to help somebody. And she can't be cooped up in this library all day reading books and not be involved with everything that's going on with her own. Rion's father, Ordon, who's also the captain, hears about this terrible news about his son and killing Mara. And he is really convinced that he must be sick in the head. Something's not right. So the Skeksis convince him to capture his son and bring him back to them so he can they can have him because they have to keep that secret with them and that secret has to die with Rion. So he agrees to go on a search to look for his son because he's thinking he must really be sick in the head to not only go against the Skeksis, but the fact that he's murdered somebody. Chamberlain, one of the Skeksis, he tells the emperor, which is the head honcho, that can you believe that the scientist, it's his fault that Rion was able to escape and he's been sipping on a little bit of the essence and that it's thanks to me that I have been able to get another Gefling, which is Gurgeon. So he says, we've got to stop this behavior of the scientist. He's got to learn his lesson and he's got to be punished. So the other Skitsis agree and the emperor agrees, agrees and they proceed to punish the scientist. I'm guessing it's not too harsh because they need the scientist to keep going with his experiments. That was the cliff notes of episode two we have a lot more episodes to go <laughs> all the way to 10 so bear with me as i give you the cliff notes and the main points of what happens in each episode pardon any names that i pronounced incorrectly um, i'm trying to remember how to pronounce all of them but let me know what you think so far subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and follow me on instagram at the same profile name official bun underscore e see you for episode three bye